Hey guys, it's Brody. And let's just get this out of the way at the start. Yes, I got a haircut. Make sure to tell me what you think in the comments below. This is my first video in my new series of tutorials that are all about competing. In each video in this series, I'm going to give a specific piece of competition related advice that should help you perform your best regardless of your speed, competition experience, or the event we're talking about. This video's topic is to never give up. Let me give you an example to show you what I mean. The average that you're watching is from 3x3 round 1 at Madison Blind and Stuff 2018. This was the first event of the day that I was really excited for, although I did do 3 blind and square 1 already that day. And as always, my ultimate goal was to get a PB average in that round. I know that it's very unlikely in any particular round, but it's a good starting point to make sure that I'm always giving it 110%, no matter what round of 3x3 it is. But unfortunately, this first solve didn't go too well for me. I ended up getting a 1070, which is really bad for me. But it did sort of act as a wake-up call, telling me that there's something wrong that I need to fix in order to get good times. I knew that I needed to focus more and get better times on the rest of the solves in my average. You are allowed one bad time in an average, after all. So I get called over for my second solve in the average, and I sit down, and as I'm doing my normal preparation routine of closing my eyes, taking some deep breaths, all that kind of stuff, then the judge lifts up the cube cover before I say I'm ready. I could have gotten an extra attempt there, but I decided in that moment that that would have wrecked my concentration more than just going with the attempt, so I went through with it. I ended up getting a 924, which even though it's a lot better than the 1070, is still a really bad time for me. And remember, at this point, because of the 1070, that 924 is now a counting solve in my average. At that point, I knew it was all but impossible for me to get a PB 3x3 average in that round. I could have just stopped trying and gotten the average over with, but I didn't. I still kept giving it 110%. It clearly worked, and my third solve was a 741. What happened is I got this OLL case, and I knew that once I did the OLL, it would skip PLL. You could call that luck, but there was also a little bit of skill in recognizing that it was going to happen and being ready for it. The odds of getting a good average were still low, but I was feeling a lot better after the 7. It sort of brought my mojo back. So then I went into solve 4 with a better mentality. And it clearly worked, because on solve 4 I got a 750. There wasn't even anything particularly lucky about it. I think I even got an F perm on that solve. It was just a really good solve all the way through. And because of the 741, now the 750 is counting as well which means that is my best counting solve ever, and I still have one solve left in the average. At this point, I'm feeling a whole mix of emotions. I'm feeling the frustration of getting a 10 and then a 9, which was counting, the happiness of getting two 7s in a row that were both really good, the nervousness that comes with competing, etc. I just had one more solve left to go, and it's worth mentioning that there wasn't really anything at stake here. This was just round one, and I was guaranteed to make round two, and I was almost definitely going to win round one anyway. But still, I kept giving it my all. The F2L was pretty average on solve five, but I ended up getting a ZBLL case that I know, and even though it's kind of a slow one, or at least it is with the ALG that I knew, I ended up getting a 792 to finish off the average. That meant that the average I got for that round was 822 which is my second best official 3x3 average ever, and it felt awesome. But think about this. None of that would have happened if I stopped caring and stopped trying after I got the counting 9.24. The only reason any of this happened is because I persisted and kept giving it 110%. I never gave up. So remember guys, whether we're talking about cubing or anything else, the only way to guarantee failure is to stop trying. So if you give it your all, you'll be surprised at some of the results it brings you. So thank you guys so much for watching the first video in my competition tips series. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you'll be notified when I make the rest of the videos in this series. And if you didn't enjoy it, feel free to let me know why and what I should fix in the comments. I'll see you guys next time, and I hope you have a wonderful day. This is Brody, signing out.